Lots to talk about here on Patriots Today by Chat Sports. You got your host, Allie Barefoot here, and the New England Patriots are wasting zero time. From minicamp to training camp, they are now making roster moves, and uh, I think this is going to be the first of many roster moves we're going to see until the end of July when they start their training camp and really get closer to the regular season. So I want to break down a couple of moves here on the offensive line, and then on the back half of this show, I want to talk about an injury update for the offensive line as well. But first things first, I want to let you guys know what the Commanders Report is doing right now in their videos in the offseason. On the last video, I posted about how we should maybe sign uh, Stephon Gilmore and trade for Brandon Ayuk. That video got 170 likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you guys who have liked the video. But the Commanders Report last video got 331 likes. I don't like losing the Commanders like that. Go on ahead, like this video. Let's help to get at least 500 likes. Blow the Commanders report out of the water for any video they decide to post today. All right, let's go on ahead and jump into the latest news you guys should know surrounding your New England Patriots. The Patriots did waive undrafted free agent guard Ryan Johnson from Youngstown University yesterday. They waived him after minicamp. But then they ended up signing another lineman as well. Let me tell you, I absolutely 110% love this move. Why? Yes, we went to the same exact college. Yes, I have known him for the last couple of years. But Liam Fernando is a phenomenal offensive lineman because he's so versatile. He can play the guard and the tackle position on the left and right side, and he's coming off a stellar stellar career with the UFL. He played 10 games with the DC Defenders, the sixth highest pass blocking grade per PFF, 82.4. He also allowed zero sacks last season for the DC Defenders. He was a 2023 All-XFL team as well, and he did work out with the Patriots last week along with the Green Bay Packers and another team. So it looks like he was really starting to get a little bit of focus here from NFL teams, and I'm really glad the Patriots decided to sign Liam Fernando because when he played Played at JMU, he was a dominant left tackle. He could possibly play the right tackle as well, but the left tackle position, he really excelled at the blind side there for Ben DiNucci. And then in the way into D.C. defenders, he started to play a little bit of mix of right guard and right tackle as well. So we know that he can play pretty much everywhere on the offensive line, which fits in perfectly for the Patriots offensive line, who seems to be mixing and matching a bunch of players right now from the right side to the left during OTAs and minicamp. So I think Fernando is going to be stellar for the Patriots here fighting for that reserve role. He's standing at about six foot five and a half, 311 pounds. I mean, this guy is a wall. And going back to the college days, you know, I was a lot skinnier in college. Liam Fernando was even a lot skinnier in college. He's put on good weight that he should have as a professional offensive lineman. But even at JMU, he was one of the bigger guys. He was fast. He was shifty. He had great footwork. So I'm excited to see what Liam Fernando can do here moving into the training, tra uh, training camp for the New England Patriots. But I want to hear from you guys as well. Grade the Patriots' recent signing of Liam Fernando. Put A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you guys think because I know a lot of NFL teams right now are signing UFL players since they just ended their season. So this is not going to be the only UFL player you may possibly see on a 53-man roster heading into the regular season. So grade this recent signing A through F. Get out your red and pen and put it in the comment section below. And I got to give a quick little shout out here to the Boston Celtics. Myself, producer Smitty, we were live last night until 1 a.m. Eastern time. We were talking about the Boston Celtics play-by-play, -play, live reaction stats, everything. And the Boston Celtics are finally NBA champions. Banner 18 is going to be hung up in TD Garden. They brought another banner to Boston. Like this video if you guys are glad the Boston Celtics are now your 2024 NBA Finals champions. All right. Fornato is expected to compete for a reserve spot. Very natural, very, very basic. This is kind of the steps he has to take now, but this is a good move in between minicamp and in between training camp because he also did practice with the Patriots, so they've already seen him working out here with a couple of role players for the Patriots. So I'm excited to see what he does in the offseason and what he can bring here towards the end of training camp because the offensive line is constantly fluctuating here. And there's a lot of uncertainty with it as well. You've got one injury with Cole Strange, who I'm going to talk about in just a moment. But we're also seeing a lot of different guys move around. And this was the offensive line they went with during minicamp. Obviously, you see City So in there kind of move from right guard to left guard. You got Nick Levert, 
lever in there. He moved from left guard to right guard. So everybody seems to be moving around. I even thought Caden Wallace was going to get more reps there at right tackle. But Mike Unwinu got most of the right tackle reps. And then he also moved to right guard as well. And then Chuck Akor for, of course, as we know, who I thought is where Wallace was actually going to get most of his reps here at left tackle. But Akor for ended up getting most of those reps done in minicamp. And then David Andrews, obviously your center, who did just get a recent extension. So, I mean, it is a literally playing connect four here we're just trying to see what the best possible five could possibly be and it's unfortunate because you can't see Cole Strange mix in with that best five do I think Cole Strange could absolutely be in that starting five once more yes but now I'm wondering okay you're moving all these players around. You got a core four on the left. You got City So on the left. You're moving Wallace to the right. You're moving a bunch of players around. But Cole Strange has this injury that's keeping him from moving in with that five there. And it's making me wonder, are they replacing Strange? Are they moving on from Strange? Because I know there was a lot of uncertainty about what injury he was actually dealing with in the offseason and when he got injured last regular season. But Mike Reese finally disclosed what injury he has been dealing with, and all we've known up to this point is that he's month to month. But now this injury makes me think this is a little bit more severe than I had intended. Mike Reese did write in his ESPN article that comes out every single Sunday, he said, the injury that Patriots 2022 first round draft pick Cole Strange is rehabilitating from a torn patellar tendon in his left knee sustained last December is something Mayo endured as a player late in his career in 2014. So the good news is that we now have a head coach that literally knows what Cole Strange is going through. But we also know that we can trust what Mayo's timeline is because although every injury is different, Mayo has sustained this as well. So now he says that Strange is month to month. That's a really long timeline, man. And I know we're in the offseason, but I've heard day to day. Month to month? I mean, what happens when you reach August? Is he still month to month at that point? I don't think he starts week one. I think that a torn patellar tendon in your left knee, I'm no doctor. Take this with a grain of salt. It sounds pretty intense. Anything that sounds torn scares the hell out of me. And I don't know if he's going to play in week one, and they cannot sit around and put him at the number one in the depth chart at your left tackle position or your left guard position, and he is not able to be ready by week one. So I did a little bit of research here because, you know, I love looking up diseases and injuries and all that fun jazz when it does not pertain to my body. And I found orthoinfo.org. If it says .org on it, I probably trust it. That's just me. This is what they wrote in their article. Complete recovery takes about six months Many patients report they required 12 months. Okay, well, he tore this in December. So now we're kind of reaching that six-month mark right now, June, July-ish. And then that 12 months would be another year. It'd be December. The season's already pretty much over because you end in January. But this is day-to-day, month-to-month. Every patient is different. This is not the official report. This doctor or orthoinfo.org on Cole Strange is just what I found on the Internet about what a torn patellar tendon recovery kind of looks like because I'm no doctor. I'm on YouTube. All right, here's what Strange did in the last two seasons, though, that kind of makes me feel like they could possibly just keep playing forward without Cole Strange, and if he ends up becoming healthy, then you can start to figure it out there and what you want to do with Strange here because overall, I mean, his grade got a lot better here from PFF in 2023 than it did in his rookie season, as I would assume, but his pass block, Went down as well. Run block, a lot better. He only allowed three sacks in 2023 with two penalties. He did a lot better, obviously, from that 17 games, that 10 games. But then he got injured, so he was having a much better season in 2023. But I'm still just nervous that these guys are going to keep getting better in practice, in training camp. Now you're signing another left tackle or a left guard or a right guard or right tackle in Liam Fernando, whichever position they decide to use him with. And I don't know if Cole Strain is going to be able to keep up. So I am a little scared that Cole Strange may not start for the Patriots in the next season or the season after that. And now I'm kind of wondering... Are they planning on replacing Cole Strange by picking up these linemen, or are they just trying to 
interactively fill that depth chart while Cole Strange is still out. So my question to you guys is, do you think Cole Strange will be ready by week one? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Keep in mind, Mayo said that he is month to month, and we are now smack dead in the middle of June. How long will month to month go? Type Y for yes, type N for no. And as always, help this channel grow. Like this video. Help us beat out Jack Sperry and all those folks over there at the Commander's Report. Make them know Patriots Today is on top. Hit that like button and go Patriots.